Hey, traders, this is Blake Marr with Trader Summit, and I have Mr. Gareth Soloway. He's the founder of InTheMoneyStocks.com, also verified investing crypto.com. Good to see you, Gareth. Hey, so good to be here, Blake. Thanks for having me back. You know, of course, I'm going to have you back. You, you've got to explain yourself and what we're going to do with this uh, Bitcoin near 20,000 because you pretty much nailed it. And here we are. I mean, it, you know, it's funny. We, we've been talking about 20,000 crypto. Well, we've been, you've been mentioning it every time we've been together for the last several months. Look, we're almost there. Some would argue we've been there. We've hit the yeah. 20,000 mark. So I got, I have to bring you back and, and figure out what the heck is going on here. And are you going to be a buyer at these levels? What do you think? Yeah. So, so amazing drop and, and yeah, you know, it's amazing to see how sentiment shifts as a trader. Right. So, I mean, when, when I was talking about this last October or so, we were at 65, 68,000 and everyone was so bullish. And now you're starting to see a lot of bearishness. Now, I'm in the camp that we're not at the lows yet. I still think, you know, 20,000, there's no doubt that is a technical level. I do think eventually it gets broken at this point, mainly because I don't think the stock market has bottomed yet. And, and when you see the NASDAQ, for instance, selling, we know that that is tied to crypto because it is a risk asset. So ultimately, I do think we're going to go down uh, further, maybe get a bounce here at 21st. But ultimately, I have a downside max target of twelve thousand on Bitcoin, and I can show you here. Let me show my charts if that's yeah. All right. I'd love to see. I'd love to see what you're seeing there. Yeah. So, so here was here was your high at sixty nine or so, and then we had that nice kind of move down, almost straight vertical down here. We had about three months of sideways consolidation, and then the next wave of selling came in. Here's your twenty thousand former high from two thousand and seventeen. One of the things that makes me think we might get a bounce here is that you did put in a bottoming tail yesterday. So bottoming tails on a technical basis, those are bullish short-term signals. Doesn't mean we're going to still hold it in three months from now, but maybe at least in the next few weeks. So you're getting a retrace today. As long as you don't take out that low on a closing basis, then this bottoming tail is a bullish indicator near term. Um, now, the key of, of looking at the 12,000 level, and I'll explain my thought process behind it. Basically, you have this drop from here to here, which is a pretty much a vertical with very few bounces. And that distance is now being replicated with, with what's called a measured move. And a measured move takes the high here to the low here, and then the high from the consolidation period. And then you map out the same distance. And that brings us to about 12,000 on Bitcoin. So that's my guess is that we're putting in this kind of measured move formation. Um, another interesting little tidbit of why that, that target makes sense is that if you go to past cycles, 2018 after it topped in 2017, and then also 2013, you actually saw 80 to 85% drawdowns in Bitcoin. If you get 80 to 85% from 69,000, you also get 12,000. So there's kind of multiple synergies with that 12,000 marker. And I think that that for me, at least is why I'm kind of in the camp of you know, we probably do go lower. That makes that makes a lot of sense, Gareth. And 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 uh, you know, there's got to be a lot of stops below that twenty thousand level. Yeah. I always like to joke that, you know, your mom, my mom, my uncle's yeah. brothers, sisters, uncles, monkeys, nephews, cousins, probably going to be buying crypto right around the Bitcoin, right around that twenty thousand level. Probably no. not, need to and, let those guys get washed out first, right? And, and it's it's so interesting too because when when I started talking twenty thousand, it was the unpopular kind of target. Of and course. then as we've gotten closer, everyone has joined that party, which now makes me say, "Oh, well, I like being unpopular, so now I got to change my target and kind of adjust it down a little bit." Because you're right, everyone has talked now about twenty thousand over the last month or so. Everyone has their stops right below twenty thousand. We know that that the powers that be are going to flush it through that. And, and again, just looking at the equity markets, I can't, at this stage, the markets aren't even back to the pre-COVID highs yet. And so you have to think that that's a target on the S&P and the NASDAQ. And that's still, you know, 10, 15% lower. And, and I can't imagine somehow Bitcoin's going to miraculously hold 20,000 if the equity markets sell off another 10 or 15%. Well, yeah, the, the price action has been very, very bearish, you know, almost across the board for risk assets. So how, let, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit now before you show me your charts and what you're seeing in the markets, let's talk a little bit of uh, the Fed. You know, the Fed just mm -hmm. met and we're going to, People are watching this not on the day that we're filming this video, but they're going to be watching at the end of the week on Friday, uh, more than likely uh, tomorrow, which would be uh, June uh, 17th. And, you know, the Fed, you know, a couple of days off of the Fed, the Fed raised rates a little bit more aggressively than, you know, the market started to price it in a, a day before. But, you know, 
markets are are trading pretty heavy here. What what's your response to what the Fed's done, and what do you where do you think the Fed's going to go from here? Yeah. So so what's interesting here is is everyone was expecting a 50 basis point rate hike until about three or four days prior when the Wall Street Journal came out and said the Fed's thinking about 75 basis points. And what did the Fed do? 75 basis points. So as a trader, I pay close attention to things like that because one of the things we know about the Fed is the Fed does not like to surprise the markets. So the Fed dropped that to the Wall Street Journal to be reported to the public. So the public started to get accustomed to 75 basis points. And what interestingly enough happened is the, the yields, the 10 year yield rallied into the Fed meeting higher, very sharply higher, and then it actually sold off. It was a sell the news event. This morning after, you know, and I know people won't be watching this for a day or two, but, but on this Thursday morning, we saw the Swiss bank surprise and hike rates, yields pushed up sharply again, and today they've now pulled back almost to the flat line. To me, that's a dead on indicator that yields are actually probably going to start to pull back here. So, again, just to show my charts on the 10 year yield, which I think is so, so yeah. cool. To well, see. While you're while you're doing that so, and, and, and don't forget, uh, we do have the Bank of Japan between the time that we film and probably by the time people are watching. Yeah. this. Do you think the Bank of Japan could pull a rabbit out of their hat like the Swiss National Bank did? Yeah, I, I think that when, and this is it's really interesting, but when, when other central banks react and do something, it enables another central bank like Japan's to do the same thing without that much of a repercussion. So I think you're, you're seeing the Fed open the door with these rate hikes. Other central banks are saying, okay, well, they're raising theirs so we can raise ours to kind of stay on par. And I would not be surprised if Japan does something like that as well. And again, the markets have weirdly priced this in, right? I mean, the choreographing from the Wall Street Journal, you can see this trend line and I'm a big chart person. Everything I do is charts. Well, going into the Fed meeting, what did we do? We tagged this kind of upsloping trend line on the 10-year yield. And then what happens? Price action pulls back. So my guess is we're probably headed back down you know, again, where, maybe how low, maybe 3%, maybe down even further. But the, the case for that pullback comes in when you look at the slowing economy. And I'm seeing more and more just on a daily basis, whether it's gas prices, whether it's energy, you know, food prices, but it, it's starting to take its toll on, on Americans here in the US and, and I think globally too. Sure. And that is going to slow the economy. And I do think that this puts an interesting position for the Fed where if we get into a, a recession later in 2022 or 2023, you know, all of a sudden the market's forward thinking, they're going to start to have to price that in. And the Fed's not raising interest rates if we're in a recession. I mean, if you see unemployment rocketing from 3% to 4% to 5 to 7 they're not going to continue to raise rates. The market's going to sense that and start to bring them back in. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that is a great point, Gareth. Now, you... Um... I know you, you you focus a lot on you know the markets in general. Is there any index that you're looking at that's more attractive than others, or maybe? And that doesn't mean long. I, that could be short as well. I, do you, are you looking at the Nasdaq, the Dow, the S and P? What are you thinking about trading right now at this moment? Yeah. So so right now the the keys are. So I've been looking at the Russell, and I'll bring up that chart for you guys. I want to show you this. And by the way, just to pre make a precursor to this statement or showing this. I'm a shorter term investor. So I'm not saying that we're going, this is a longer term trade on the IWM, but you know, it, it, what I'm looking at is an oversold short term condition. You're filling a gap here on the IWM chart. You have this support here, just below you have a ton of support here. And my guess is the Russell, which led us down. And, and this is another interesting point. If you look at the Russell, the Russell topped out before the NASDAQ and the S&P. And, and the Russell is one of those indexes I use a, as a kind of leading indicator for the rest of the market. So if you look at the, the high here on the Russell, which by the way, was a failed breakout and failed breakouts, one of my sayings is uh, you get the biggest moves from failed moves. Meaning that when you fail a breakout, which occurred right here, likely you're gonna get slammed. And that's exactly what happened here. Um, but the bottom line is, this topped out in early November. If you go to the NASDAQ 100 chart, the NASDAQ 100 didn't top out till late November. So it was about a two to three week leading indicator for the overall market. So what I'm doing is I'm starting to pay attention to the Russell um, in the near term here, which may start to sense that interest rates are topping out here. And then on the other side of the coin, I'm actually uh, someone who's playing with the short side of oil. 
So I have a bunch of indicators here that are telling me oil is, is actually a short, which goes contrarian to what everyone else is saying. I mean, everyone you talk to go long energy stocks, energy is the safe play. Number one, they said the same thing at Bitcoin at 65,000. So we have to be suspect when you start to hear that, right? But I like, I like oil on the downside. The thesis there for me is that as we get towards the end of the year, a lot of fear of recession is going to come in. And that means demand is going to slip dramatically for oil and oil could come in dramatically on that, that side. So there's always, I mean, this is the greatest thing about trading, right? There's always a long, there's always a short, there's always opportunities. You just have to look at the chart and find them. There really are. And I'm glad that you're here to, uh, to help guide the Trader Summit community through that. And so if, I, if I'm, uh, if I'm you know, just hearing your name for the very first time, how do I follow what you do, Gareth, on a daily? So Twitter's the best place, at Gareth Soloway on Twitter, my first last name. Um, and then obviously uh, the websites you mentioned earlier, and I appreciate that, inthemoneystocks.com. Um, I put out stock you know, signals as well as daily videos and verified investing crypto, which is just crypto. Um, and I do, again, trade signals there on lots of lots of crypto, uh, you know, alts and, and Bitcoin, as well as daily videos for education and kind of analysis as well. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun market right now. It's scary, but it's fun. All right. Well, fair, scary is means volatile and volatile right. is good for traders. So we appreciate you, Gareth. If you're watching Gareth on YouTube, make sure you give him a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel down below so you don't miss any of our exclusive content with Gareth. Hey, have a great one. I can't wait to our next conversation. I know it's been way too long. Try to make it quicker next time. I would love to. We definitely should be talking on a regular basis. Absolutely, Gareth. Hey, have a great one and thanks for your time. Thank you. Hey, traders, Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also click the bell notification so you do not miss any of our market-related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.